all right guys welcome to our next forecast video which is going to be our official fall 2022 alert which i say unofficial we're going to be discussing various forecasts and um that will lead to our overall of fall forecast zones which we will get to later in this video um, but a couple of zones have some hints to it of course um and you're in luck because we do have forecasts for those as well. So let's just get straight into it. So overall, unfortunately, there isn't really any cooler than average temperatures. Not even where we do see the chance for a new normal. Um, but I could be wrong about that, if anything. But we do have a warmer fall across most the majority of the nation. Of course, with the exception being the Northern Plains. With the highest anomalies being in the southwest. And for our precipitation outlook, we do have a couple areas where you can see some wetter than average for the season. One of that's in the Pacific Northwest, and the other is across the Atlantic, extending into the Ohio Valley southeast, and also new northeast regions and along the east coast, with the better ch chances forecasted across the mid Atlantic coast. And across the heartland of the nation, we do have drier than normal precipitation chance for the fall, with the highest chances forecasted across the plains in that darker yellow shaded zone, which, which is focused in the high plains. So the drier than normal chances also include portions of Midwest, Southern Plains, and even extending into the Southwest region. This area might have a chance of seeing some rain, especially with time later in the fall. Specifically the southwest. So, I mean, they're not going to be totally out of drought, but it might help a little bit, if, especially if you end, do end up seeing more rain than what you would normally expect. And here's our fall foliage forecast. Um, we're going to go oh, north and south in this one. So, so for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and... Um, Portions of the North New England region, also across the higher mountains of the Rockies and the Cascades. That's where I do expect the late September peak. And then as, as we go into our red region, including the Northern Plains, up in Midwest, much of the Great Lakes, and across much of the Appalachians, and as well as the mountains of the West, we do expect October anywhere from mid early to mid-October for that peak fall foliage to occur. And this things still move a little bit slowly, but start to pick up um, as we head into our next region, which is our orange zone. It could be anywhere from late October to early to mid-November. Um, also, especially given the warmer fall that we're expecting to see, we could see a little bit of a delay in fall foliage this year. And we do see this kind of peak fall foliage time anywhere from the northern central plains, across the Midwest, northern Ohio Valley, um, southern Appalachians, and even a little bit into southern New England, as well as more regions of the West as well. Again, mainly focusing on the mountains since this region tends to be a little bit warmer than the rest of the country during the colder season or even in general. And heading into our next one where things start to uh, pick up with, in regards to speed uh, of the fall foliage progression across country, we do have a next zone, which is anywhere from mid to late November, specifically November 11th to the 21st, which is focused um, from the Ohio Valley, Central Southern Plains, and also the Pacific Northwest Coast and some areas in the valleys of the mountains in the west. And that could even potentially be the Las Vegas area, depending on what you're talking about. But that could also be more of a close to the end of November thing, which is in our next zone over here. But of course, let's also talk about the fact that the rest of the Mid-Atlantic Coast and um, East Coast really... No Delmarva North, which is also in this November 11th, 21st zone. And then now on to our November 21st to 30th zone, which is our next row of fall foliage peak dates. 
it's really across the most of the rest west coast and also including most of the southern US. And then this these regions down here across the deep south um, really don't have much if at all fall foliage. So either they're December really nothing at all, which is how I would put it if you're anywhere in these dark green regions. And of course, some of these regions could get a little fall color, but I don't know if it's so much like literally when fall is happening at this point. But on to our next map. So we could see some of the higher mountains that could see some snow later this month, which is specifically highlighted in our red zones, which are really just across the western mountains. And then also mostly limited to mountains, although I could have added, um, a little bit into the northern plains, um, at least, especially for the later half of September. So, so this is really anytime September and the lighter pink zones, just again mainly focused on the West Mountains, but I feel like Mount Washington as well, which I really think would be a very isolated, not even to put on the map, could also have a September snowfall. And I could have also literally just added that in the northern plains, at least for later in the month. So I just put this text here which indicates potential for late September snow in this region. And then in our darker pink zone, um, which is basically across the northern tier of the United States and also the northern Appalachians and northern New England regions. Also lower, a little lower down across the western mountains, which is where we could see our first snowfall during the month of October. In our dark blue shaded zones, which is more west and also in the central United States and across the rest of the Appalachians for the most part, and also southern New England, we do expect our November snowfall to be our first at least measurable snowfall date. And um, in our medium blue shaded zone, which is across much of central southern United States and also across much of the east coast, including mid-Atlantic, and even a little bit in the southeast, and also down here across the rest of the southern plains and um, more along the west coast. We could see um, a first snowfall in the month of December, most likely. And in our light blue shaded zone, it is possible like a few flakes could fall, maybe even up to a couple inches of snow. But really not expecting much, so I didn't really put a month on that. And then in our gray shaded areas across these typical deep south, southwest regions. I'm not really expecting any snow for really any time during even the winter at this point. So all of this um, leads up to our overall fall forecast, which is right here. So I'm going to work my way um, west to east on this. So across Pacific Northwest, I'm, I'm expecting an overall wet, but I'm also milder fall. We could see active stormy track across this region, which is how I feel would add up to the above average precipitation. But then across southwest, we do expect warmer, possibly near normal precipitation, maybe even it's been mixed indications between above and below normal for this general region. So some areas could get below and others could get above normal precipitation, but overall expect to be even warmer and possibly much warmer than normal. Loose this fall. Things could even be toned down a bit. Maybe you can see some cooler periods here and there. I feel like I did do a little bit overdoing on the temperature anomalies for this region, but I do still think we could see a warmer fall this year, which is also the main theme across most of the rest of the country. Um, it could be a little cool early um, across the Rockies, specifically the Sun Rockies. And things could warm up at least um, when compared to average later in the fall. And then where I do expect the best potential for some early season snowstorms during the fall. Of course that could happen really anywhere across the northern tier and even New England. Even across the western mountains in general. But um, the best potential for this would that would be northern plains in general. So in that blue shaded zone across the northern plains, even a little bit into the northern Rockies, is where I do expect this highest potential for an, for an early season snowstorm. And then across the plains, really, um, 
we could even see some jobs potentially developing anywhere in this orange shaded zone. But the main theme, of course, is warm, dry conditions. It's also where those drier conditions are more focused, so that's why I feel like we could see some intensification, even worsening of the drought, possibly some new areas getting into drought as well during the fall. And then in our yellow shade region across Midwest and Great Lakes, we will expect more dry and wet periods, but of course we could see some rainy storm periods as well, even some of our first snowfall occurring during this time as well. Possibly a snowstorm or two, but I can't really go into that. And also it would probably be less intense than what we'll be seeing for winter as well. Which I'm not gonna go over until a month or two later from now. Um, for our highest severe weather potential region, this would be across southeast. Um, it could it could even be a little further north than that for any severe weather. Obviously, it's not going to be focused along this region, but really anywhere across mainly the central and eastern portions of the United States, we could see a spike in severe weather because this is also a tend to be an active severe weather season because that colder air is also coming back into the northern United States. We still have that humid, warm Gulf air advancing into the southern United States, even possibly into the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic regions at times. And with these two air masses clash into each other, um, the cold air will tend to sink further south than what we would normally see in the spring, as I would feel at least. But um, that could also be expanded across Midwest and a little bit into the plains, given our warmer fall outlook. But here's where I would feel is our highest potential first weather and tornado outbreaks during the fall. And then in our mid-Atlantic and southern New England regions, as well as northeast, of course, east and Great Lakes. Here's where I would expect a stormy fall with the wetter conditions, at least slightly wetter conditions than normal. I feel like there are going to be more times going to be stormy than prolonged dry periods. It could even be in terms of snow, depending on the track of the storms and everything. Especially like November, December time is where I would feel we could see some storms really dipping south and some of the northern portions of this region could see some heavy snow. But of course, all that will depend on how storm tracks evolve and how far to the south we could see that colder air mass from the Canada be pulled. And then across the northern New England region, we do have some expect to be some rainy periods late. It'll all otherwise be dry earlier on in the fall. Of course, it could also be snowy late, but I do feel this will be a more rainy region, at least for November, December, than snowy, I feel. Also, to bring the mention of the fact that most of the region is in warmer conditions expected for this fall, but the only region that really isn't in any kind of warmer conditions on the Alex is across the Northern Plains. So again, here's a last minute glance at the temperature outlook just to have to not repeat myself again. Again, I put the highest chances for the Southwest. Um, I could be wrong about that and I need a if anything, it would probably be across here, but um, this really wasn't made I like today. It was really getting to do it like a few days earlier. But of course, um, models have changed, and it would have been expanding those wetter and even drier conditions across plains. Further over here, like to the south, and then some that has been modified, as well as the uh, Increasing chances of wetter than normal precipitation. We see those changes in model guidance. So that's where we really we put that confidence in our fall outlooks. But other than that, um, we do expect... Um, so if anything, I do forgot to mention though, um, our tropical zone, which will be the most likely area for any um, late season landfalls and also heading into the peak of the season, would be along the Gulf Coast course that doesn't negate any landfalls across the rest of the coastlines, even across the, all of the East Coast, and also um, across Florida and even down here. But this is just a U.S. forecast, and this is where I do expect our highest chance of um, the tropical storm hurricane landfalls to be, 
Again, a no pink shade zone along the Gulf coastline. But again, no coastline is saved from any landfalls whatsoever. It's just how I feel. We have the best chance of seeing landfalls. Um, there's really not much else to go over because we just pretty much did a forecast. So while the weather was really inactive, we just figured we'd do this. And so we have to get it out of the way and everything. Um, if you would like to see some more of a forecast like this, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell. And get this out to more people and um, of course our coverage and forecasts, which will really do more when the weather becomes more active. Or even in the sense of tropical weather, 